Hi, good morning. And we're going to get started with ARIA's uh, introduction to ARIA NLG Studio. So what we're going to talk about today is natural language generation and automating the storytelling process for your business. So my name is Kathy Herbert, and the mission of my team is to empower ARIA customers and prospects and partners with the knowledge to develop really cool NLG projects um, and solutions. And we're gonna show you some of those today. Uh, while in this webinar, for the very first part of the webinar, everyone's in listen only mode. Um, absolutely feel free to start asking questions throughout in the chat window. And as soon as the presentation comes to an end, we'll start addressing questions. You'll also have an opportunity to ask questions live. So the first thing that when we're working with customers, uh, we, we work with them on finding a really valuable NLG use case, um, something that's going to have a strong impact on their business, uh, a document that's high value, insights that are high value, that are typically manual today, but we have an opportunity to, to um, improve that process and be able to push a button and get a really great narrative or a really great insight. So first we look for frequently changing data. So do we have frequently changing data and, and it's really hard for me to get that report written or get that insight out without spending three or four hours doing it when I may want to multiple times through the week push a button and, and figure out what my data is telling me. Um, large volumes of data that are hard to interpret. Uh, data that currently requires the expert human analysis because part of what NLG does is it works with your top experts on analyzing your data to understand why they say what they say when they say it and then translating it into one of our studio projects. Um, are there multiple versions and personalization requirements. So this is a great one because um, data can tell many stories. And uh, we we built a project um, for a hospital at one point, and they had data coming in, uh, infant sen sensors throughout the night. And when the parents come in in the morning, uh, they need to have one story. Um, told in, told a certain way about how their child did. A doctor needs sort of another version, while a nurse may need, um, you know, a different uh, version as well, right? So you may have the same data uh, driving multiple narrations. We also have some journalism that's being done, automated journalism, where the data might tell three times three types of stories. If I'm telling a story uh, and the, the data for your location is really good data, then it's a positive story versus another location which might have more of a negative tone because the data is telling us that it's a more significant problem in this region or area. So we find this is a big requirement for natural language generation. Uh, re reporting on demand, as I said, being able to click a button. Um, information discovery, regulatory reporting, and multi-channel output. So we'll get into these in a little more detail. So the first thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is corpus analysis. So when we look at um, good use cases for NLG, the first thing you have to do is identify what data you have. And the second thing you need to identify, uh, what do I want to say? Um, and once you've done that, you're in a position to do a corpus analysis. So what we typically do is we look at this target corpus. So you can see this is portfolio data. Uh, and I'm taking a look at how is my portfolio doing today? And I have data to support that. Um, there are kind of four categories when you do a corpus analysis. One is fixed and unchanging text. Um, so I really don't need data to say, how is my portfolio doing today? Because I may always be saying that or some version of that. Um, when I get to the red part, it's text which communicates information not available in the input data. So we don't see anywhere in the input data where Jane is a user. So we would need to figure out how to load that data in there to be able to say that, to use that particular phrase. Um, and then we have 
text which expresses insights that can be derived from the data. So we're talking about a portfolio being up and we've derived that it's highest performing. We've derived that in comparing it with everything else. Um, and then there is the green, which is the straight pass through of information. So it's fairly straightforward, but all of this goes into creating that perfect optimal use case for NLG, understanding that your data actually has the ability to tell that story. So topics we're going to go through today, the first thing we're going to do is a demo. And I'm going to show you how we can use Power BI as a presentation layer. I could also be using um, Tableau or Click um, from a presentation perspective. We could be generating content that's, that is being displayed on your website, in a chat bot, in HoloLens glasses, um, leveraging Cortana. Uh, we could be asking Alexa questions and getting narrative back. So there are lots of different ways that we present natural language generation. And today I'm just choosing to show it with BI. Um, within that, we're going to show you how we can generate instant narratives, extended narratives, and custom narratives. I'm going to export a Power BI project PowerPoint, which is something that our customers frequently, frequently want to do. I've got this great dashboard. I need to share it with my business. I'm going to do a presentation. How do I quickly generate that to PowerPoint? Um, and then we're going to go into NLG Studio, which is the tool that ARIA provides, which allows you to extend your narrative or build custom narratives. It gives you complete control of your narrative. So this is, this is our, our, our showcase dashboard. If you go to our sample site, it's a dashboard that you'll be able to download and play with. Um, it has some instructions on how it works, so feel free to read through that. We also have documentation to support it on the website. We talked about three different types of uh, narratives that we can generate using our, this is my Power BI add-in. I have the ability to configure out-of-the-box narratives and create instant insights. I also have the ability to create custom narrative or even extend uh, what we've created in these using these instant insights. So the first thing that you're going to do if you're configuring an instant insight is to tell us about the data that you want to tell a story about. So you're either talking about dimensions or measures. Um, so in this case, I'm selecting a number of dimensions as well as measures that we'd like to talk about. So you can see that we're talking about the amount, which is a currency in US dollars. I'm talking about a dimension, which is a year. So what was my amount by year? I'm talking about a, a dimension called quarter. What was the amount by quarter? So by selecting these data elements, they'll be able to feed what becomes my uh, instant insights or out of the box narrative. I'm going to go ahead and click on my next box and tell me what type of analysis you want. So here I have the ability to um, talk about variance. So in this case, I'm using a time-based variance, although it could be a target-based variance. So if I had you know, actual versus planned figures, that would be a target variance. In this case, I'm doing a time-based variance. So I'm saying, tell me um, about the amount over quarter, uh, latest to previous or latest to earliest would be my options there. I also have the ability to talk about descriptive statistics um, and even the ability to move around the narrative if I determine that one narrative one area of the narration is more important than the next. And then finally, what do I want to say about the story? Do I want a summary? Do I want only the important things? Or do I want the narrative to tell me everything? So I'm going to go ahead and click on everything and generate text. Um, and you can see it's telling me about um, each of my line of business and 
what the decrease was driven by. It's giving me every insight it can find based on the data that I've created. And maybe I read through that and it's interesting, but it's just a little too much information. So from a business perspective, I have the, the ability to just tell me the important things, um, which is great. So that is your instant insights. If you look at those instant insights and you say, this is really, this provides me out of the box um, pretty much what my business needs, but I want to do some tweaking. We provide you with an NLG Studio project that you can go modify, um, tweak for your business, and then you would you would manage that uh, NLG Studio project. So that's what happens when you're extending a narrative. Um, I also want to go in and show you custom narrative, and I'm going to give you two examples. Uh, the first example is the showcase example. Um, and it's a pretty cool example because it shows you our ability to do drill downs. So if I look at, I'm looking at account level, level two, uh, this is a narrative that is not out of the box. It was custom designed for what this customer or what this business wanted to understand um, about their data, right? So, or about their dashboard. And the important thing to understand when you're looking at ARIA NLG is our narratives are not tied to any specific chart. You have the ability to go in and select all of the data elements that are necessary to tell that story. And once we have the data elements, then you can use NLG Studio to configure that story. Going back to the slide I showed earlier, what information do I need to be able to tell this story? I select that from Power BI, and it'll automatically send that data so Studio can uh, send back that narrative. So you can see here, the above mentioned reduction was mainly due to savings in central services, which was 16.7 million. Well, maybe I have another user that needs a drill down to level four. And so when I look at that, it'll actually tell me what that 16.7 million consisted of. And so I can see that 16.7 million consisted of other uh, group head office, general and admin. Um, so it gives me a, a, a deeper drill down. I'm going to show you one more dashboard. Um, and this happens to be a, um, this is one of my favorite dashboards because it really shows you how interactive the narrative can be based on what you're clicking on within your project. So if I go into a particular overview, and this happens to be a uh, financial review for an, an automotive sales. So we have minivans, we have pickups, we have sedans, we have convertibles, we have compacts. Um, and if I go and I'm viewing all of my data holistically, it's unfiltered and I want to know what my net profit is. I want to know who had the biggest market. I want it to understand my drivers and offsets um, and find out a little bit more about what's going on market wide. If I see that the UK is the biggest market and I want it to just select the UK, um, I could click on the map or have a little drop down here. Um, that will let me unselect and just select the UK. So now you can see I have a brand new narrative um, that gives me a, a deeper drill down on uh, what's happening in the UK. And it tells me that the compact model is my best performing. So if I click on compact model, Right, I'll get even, you know, I'll, I'll get even another narrative um, based on how I've filtered the information. So it just really shows you how interactive these dashboards can be. That as your user clicks around, uh, they have the ability to get uh, get a very tailored story based on the data that they're interested in. So it truly becomes an interactive dashboard. So we're going to go ahead and select everything and go back to our initial narrative. Um, as I said before, one of the things that we find that our customers really want to do, 
think I've just selected compact here. I want to go back to everything. Um, there we go. Is to be able to export their whole dashboard, and it, it, it may be multiple pages out to a uh, PowerPoint, so then they can work with it. So in order to do that, we publish to PDF. And then as long as you have Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat PDF Pack, Adobe Standard DC, or Adobe, um, Acrobat uh, Pro DC, you'll have the ability to take that PDF and generate it into a a Word doc, a, a rich text format, an Excel doc, or a PowerPoint, which is what we see most of our customers do. And what's really cool about the PowerPoint that's generated is um, it is fully editable. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the PowerPoint that's been generated, and I'll go ahead and save it in my downloads. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and show you. Let's go ahead. There's my PowerPoint. And now if I want to modify anything in the narrative, I can do that uh, for demo today. Or if I wanted to modify something in my charts, I would be able to do that as well. So it is um, fully edited, editable, and it'll give you full control over that presentation that you need to give to um, your business colleagues um, or superiors. So let me go into NLG Studio and give you an overview of how you create a project that actually creates either extended or custom narratives. So I'm going to go into NLG Studio. And you can see that I have a project that is called the BI um, Auto Financial Demo. So it's actually the project that we were just looking at um, through a BI lens. Again, I could be calling that narrative and it could be popping up on a website somewhere. Uh, but you can see once you get into Studio, and I was in the dashboard and I've just clicked on a project. So you would have multiple projects that you would work on. Let me go back for a second. There are actually four different types of projects that we support. If you're comfortable working with tabular data, you like rows and columns, we have the ability um, to create, create CSV projects. Um, so describe each row would take in, um, if you're thinking about an Excel spreadsheet, it's tabular data, you take each row in the table and it's going to create its own story. Um, if you're talking about describe each table, again, you're working with, say, Excel data and it's tabular data. So all, your entire spreadsheet tells one story and describe each row in context really gives you a lot of flexibility in that it'll let you talk about each row. But for this row, I could actually say that, um, you know, th this particular row of data um, is the highest performing or the lowest performing or in the top third or the bottom fourth because I can get access to other information so I can really give con more context to that row of data. Uh, and finally, for those of you who are really familiar and like working uh, with JSON, we've got the ability to use JSON as the uh, input data format. So let me go ahead and click back over to the project that you just looked at the uh, auto financial demo. So if you look down the left hand side, you can see that my data has been loaded in. It's in JSON format for those of you that are familiar with it. Um, and I can look at my data. We have variables that are predefined um, and variables make it really easy for, for my author. Right, if the author wants data, they can pull directly from the variables to get the data they need to actually tell that narrative. Uh, and then most of your time is going to actually be spent in the composition window. So within the composition window, 
will ha you'll have scripts that you've created and in this case I foldered my scripts so if I look at unfiltered the unfiltered script is actually the overview you're looking at when all of your data is being sent into that model and I can go ahead and preview that so you can see that this is the overview that we just looked at from from Power BI um, the way this is created is you've got the ability to go in and create your narrative uh, using the variables that we've defined so you can see uh, I'm pulling in net profit for target month and if I click down here peek your, I have a target month I have a target year I have a previous year so we have pre-configured all of that information so that the author knows that um, I have a get direction so you know a get direction is going to automatically if I put in the net profit the first net profit it's going to tell me whether it increased or decreased so it's actually fairly simple to follow uh, what the logic is it's creating the narrative the tools we provide we provide uh, conditional logic if this happens say one thing if something else happens say something else uh, we also give you the ability to leverage a library of function calls so our we have several function call area we have several different categories of functions um, we have data access functions that help you access information date and time functions formatting functions a library of language functions that allow you to drive variation and other things into your narrative uh, math functions for any types of calculations you need to do as well as text functions um, we have the ability to create scripts and insert scripts so you've got a lot of flexibility there as well as the source capability so I want to talk a little bit about custom scripts um, cust, cust, or I'm sorry custom functions custom functions to me is actually uh, the the secret sauce that that enables you to leverage all of the functions we have but if you have a specific function that is important to your project or your business or would make it easier for you to generate natural language generation you can create custom functions to do that um, and we have a, a language that would support uh, called articulate text language that will support you in doing that um, so I'm just clicked on get direction so get direction gives me the ability to pass in a value and a positive wording and a negative wording and so it's just going to check if the value is positive then do positive wording else negative wording so that means you don't have to build this logic in your narrative you can just you can just call get direction uh, and give it the values that it needs um, so again we find this very powerful in being able to extend and we even have uh, some partners and customers that have built uh, custom functions for other languages um, as, as, as required as as they um, you know expand how they're using NLG studio we have Lex rules for uh, it advanced lexical choice and control over the narrative that you're creating from a settings perspective uh, I can version and then I can restore back to previous versions uh, I can enable team working so that I can collaborate with a team on a particular project. I can set uh, global rules on how I want to deal with currency, large values, small values. Um, I can specify how I want lists, handli lists handled, whether I want to list A, B, and C, or A, B, or C, or A, B. Um, or if you've got something else you want to use as that conjunction, how, how do you want your commas used, what kind of separators do you want, um, and then we have some post-processing capability where we'll go ahead and take care of A and N correction as well as uh, enable sentence capitalization. And then finally, we have the ability to publish your project. 
but before we publish it, let me go back into composition and let's make a really simple change to one of our narrative scripts. So I'm going to go into my unfiltered narrative and we're going to say overview for company ABC. And I am going to go ahead and bold that and let's change it into a heading three. So that'll make it much larger. Uh, now I've made a change to my narrative and I want to publish it and I want to make it available um, from you know what whatever presentation layer I'm using. So what I would simply do is go out to publish and this pub this project's already been published, but I'm going to go ahead and republish it. So let's go ahead and publish it. And it is pu it has published it successfully, and you can see it's published it to this RESTful uh, API endpoint. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. We are going to go back to the project. And the next time it generates this text, you can see that it's an overview for ABC Company. So it's as simple as that to go in and make updates to your narrative um, that are now going to be reflected in whatever presentation layer uh, that you, you desired. So I'm going to go ahead and open up for questions.